A critical component of any game is the players. Who is playing in your game? Who should you have? Who shouldn't you have? Find out. This week's sponsor is Portrait Works. Character portraits on your phone, on the fly. Now, I've been speaking about Portrait Works from the very beginning because I love the portraits that they create. Absolutely phenomenal one-touch button type events to create portraits, any kind of portraits that you might like or use in your game. Now, they have finally launched with an amazing array of portraits, billions of options. Use the link down below, go check them out. I promise you, your character portraits for PCs or NPCs will never be the same again, and they will always now be so much more, so much better, so much yours. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. It is a fantastic week and I hope that you are having a fantastic week as well. Now, we're talking one of my favourite subjects, the different player types. I've spoken about this before on the channel, but I've refined my views. I've spoken to GMs and players alike and have kind of looked at this list of the different types of players that you might encounter in your game. Now, bearing in mind some players are maybe the... there may be one or two or three combined together, and none, none of these are either diabolically bad or amazingly wonderful. They are dependent on the group. If all of your players sitting around the table are of one type, that group is going to be mind-blowingly, amazingly wonderful and have an amazing time. So these are not the good and bad, these are just the different, and sometimes they don't work well together. Sometimes they work really well together. It is about knowing about them that will give you the power to discover whether the players are causing your game to fail or not. So let's get on with it. The very first one, the power gamer. I have read all of the rules. I have built a character that is perfect legally. They are the most powerful they possibly can be. And so in certain situations, my character is immortal. And in other situations, my character is a glass cannon and will just simply fall over dead and I will whine about it forever because it wasn't fair. Power gamers love to build the ultimate character types. And I've played in games where I did not power game and my character suffered and struggled. I wasn't having fun, but all of the other power gamers sat around the table were having a blast as they were looking at just how well they'd optimized their characters in the game. They were having fun. I wasn't. Lesson learned. Power gamers can be a lot of fun to play with because they find the most amazing combinations that you look at and you go, wow, didn't see that one. That's brilliant. Killers. Killers, 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 killers. Sometimes called murder hobos, although I don't like that term. There are all sorts of implications that go along with that. Killers, I think, is a much better one. And this is people who just kill. They don't care. They kill the game. They kill the player characters. They kill the NPCs. They kill the monsters. They just kill everything. That's all that they're interested in. They are a very destructive force in your game world. Why? Because they can be. There's no ramifications for killing things. And if you try and give them ramifications, they'll kill the things that were sent to give the ramifications to them in the first place. They are... I don't like killers. There we go. That's all there is to say on that. Don't be a killer. Moving on. My precious, my precious character. Precious players. Players who think that their characters are the most important character in the game and should get all of the loot and should get all of the cool stuff and should have all of the story centered and focused around them. Oh, well, I'm just my precious. Yes, great. Go play a game on your own. I've written a solo RPG. Go have fun. You are precious is safe with your... Uh, you know what? There are actually some bad player types. Precious are one of them. Avoid them. The escapist. The escapist is there to play a game simply to get away from it all. They want excitement. They want adventure. They want enjoyment. They, they don't want the harsh realities of life. They don't want deep philosophical discussions or hard riddles. Or, they just want to have fun. They want to escape. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. But don't expect this type of player to take your game too seriously because that's just work and they don't want to work. They want to escape. Escapists are great if you want to have adventures that go all over the place and are really crazy and fun and cool and that kind of stuff. The actor. We all know them. I'm one of them. They like to put on voices. 
They like to react and possibly even get emotional at a situation that's completely fictitious. They get affected. They have all the feels. Actors are amazing folk, and if they really get into it, they can make your game feel like you're watching a film rather than playing a game. They can really, really enhance it. Sometimes, though, they can monologue too much, so you do need to handle them with kit gloves, kind of going, yes, all right, we've heard you twice now. So moving on to the next actor who's going to give us their monologue, or let's do a dialogue between all of you. Actors can be a lot of fun if everybody at the table is an actor because they're going to throw stuff around. They're going to, you're going to sit back and watch most of this and just occasionally insert a little extra who's going to walk on stage give them a cue and then watch as the actors unpack again they're a lot of fun provided that they are all actors the storyteller storytellers might take copious notes during the session they'll be writing everything down they'll be trying to create backstory they'll be linking their characters to other characters they'll be combining all kinds of things together to create this amazing narrative story what a pleasure to play with storytellers if everybody wants to be a storyteller. I've had games where I've had a storyteller who's trying to rope in their family and is making the world feel as real as possible. Whereas the other players were escapists or had other uh, attributes and just wanted to get on with it and didn't care about what the family was doing back home or this or that or the next thing. The storyteller is not a my precious. The world doesn't center around their character and frequently they will try and have their character sacrifice themselves for the rest of the party because it makes for a better story. But they are not obsessed with their character getting everything and hardship for the character is much more interesting for a storyteller than it is for uh, anybody else as a matter of fact because it gives them more story, more meat to work with. The winner. Winners are very difficult people to play with, generally speaking. And that's mainly because they want to win at the game that is effectively not a winning game. They're not a power gamer necessarily. They haven't designed the ultimate character. They're not a My Precious because it's not about their player character winning. They don't care about their player character. They care about themselves winning as the human being, as the, well, yes, look at me. I know all of the rules and I created an amazing character and it was I, me and myself and I and I and I. I, who, um, you know, we, we were the ones, I, I, I was the one, not, not we, I. So the winner is all about themselves, not their player character, not even the game. They just want to show everyone that they are brilliant and amazing and wonderful folks. I would love to have a whole bunch of winners sitting around the table just so that you can sit back and watch until, wait basically for one of them to eventually go insane and start killing the others to prove that they are the best winner. The Joker. Oh, I like to make jokes. I'm here just because I'm making fun of stuff and I'm going to do ridiculous things. I'm going to disrupt the game and I'm just here to see if I... I can push the physics of the game to as far as breaking point or basically just play in a cartoon. A whole bunch of jokers playing games with one another would be amazing. It would be super fun. They'd be doing crazy one-upmanship stuff, firing each other out of cannons, who knows, pulling fish out of their pants. Whatever it is that these folks think is funny and amusing, they're not there for the game, they're not there for the story, they're not there for the player characters or the NPCs or anything along those lines. They just want to have fun, relax and unwind. They will work sometimes quite well with escapists because the escapists don't want anything serious either and the joker actually brings in some brevity and makes things you know oh let's laugh no, ha, 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 ha. Uh, not brevity levity um but uh, nonetheless that's what a joker is all about if you're trying to run a dear very serious game a joker is going to disrupt that straight away because they don't have any care about all of the seriousness that must be going on the socialite. The socialite is there not because they want to play the game, but they're there because they want to socialize with everybody and be seen socializing, okay? Socialites want to be part of a group. They want to see their friends. They want to get together. They want to have some snacks. They want to chat. They want to hang out. Oh, yes, and play some role-playing game in between. Now, I use that particular accent simply because that's what I think of when I think of people who are socialites and are there simply because they want to have fun. That's probably a bad reflection on socialite role players who want to role play, but for them the experience of the pre and post game discussions and experiences is more important. And that's really why they're there. There's nothing wrong with them. They just won't be so focused on the game. They won't be as intensely uh, fixated on the minutia as the storyteller might be. They won't be as invested as the actor. Or, uh, they also won't be as lackadaisical as the escapist because they're there for their friends. They want to know what their friends' lives is happening in their lives and, and that kind of stuff. They're, they're nice people. They're, they're just not 
you know, hardcore dedicated role players. The Explorer. Now, the Explorer is very similar to the Storyteller, except that the Explorer, instead of wanting to create their own narrative, is all about getting the narrative. They might not interact very much with anything. They might not even try and drive a narrative. They're just, just there to explore the world or the story. So they want other people to have the limelight and to run and drive games and to drive decisions whilst they just watch what's going on. They love to see these things unfold in front of them and sometimes they like to cause that to happen. But these are the folk who'll go, I see that mountain range over there. I want to go there. What's there? What's in that space? They might be that forthright or usually they'll just bob along and see where we go. Those are the different player types that I have seen in my campaigning career. What are the different types that you've seen? Have I left anyone out? Are there, there types down below? And I don't want the toxic types. I mean, this is, this. I got a little bit toxic. Okay, but you know what? Killers are killers and, and jokers are jokers and, 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 and yeah. <sighs> so what have I left out? comments down below. Until next time, a massive thank you to you for watching all the way through to the end and to our Patreons for uh, loving the channel. Until next time, happy gaming.